Hello to this new episode about multi-sample generator now in version 2.0 for Bitwig. This tool can be used if you have a bunch of samples to create Bitwig multi-samples so you can load them into Sampler. Watch the first part of this tutorial about version 1.0 to give you an idea what you can do. And in version 2 there are lots of new features, drawbacks in version 1.0 where that there was no support for uh, velocity layers and and you could only map stereo files but not files which were split into two mono files so these drawbacks are all now gone in version 2.0 so let's have a look at it here i loaded up version 2.0 and you see from the top there is here first a new option if you only want to analyze the samples and not directly generate them to check if there are any errors in there or you get exceptions you can enable that option so let's check that out yeah, let's say all the electric pianos i have uh, output folder is here on the desktop and let's say i only want to analyze it execute that and you see then the results you also see that in a log file here in the controller script console so the logging is also a little bit more detailed first the analyzing process is happening then you see the mapping part takes place and this also tells you how many velocity layers are detected more about that later on so here for example you see that sound has now three velocity layers so let's go back to here so this is the first option if i choose it to off again and then execute it then you will see it's also storing now the files and you can also watch that here again in the log file so you see now after the mapping took place also the files get stored on your your hard disk. So what else do we have here? I said and already talked about the velocity layers. So there is now an option here that you can detect patterns. And here I have two patterns, which means if we look here at an example, these were these e-piano samples I just showed you. So here you see that the start of all the sample names is at S O O O for the first layer and the second layer is is here if you scroll down is one and the next one is two samples who are named in such a scheme are now supported which means you somehow need to have in the name a number which increases which indicates the layer and you need to have some text around it so in that example here i have this s underscore and then the star gives you the information where the number needs to be and there is another dash so this part is now identified as the detection pattern for the layer as you see we have here three of these layers so zero one and two and uh, since there is no information what velocity this is mapped to i simply equally distribute this over the velocity range from zero to 127 and here is now the option to turn that around so if zero is not the lowest velocity but the highest you can say it's descending then the number two has the lowest velocity number one has a middle velocity and number zero has the highest velocity which is the case with that sound that's why i put that one here to descend Ending. if we execute that again let's run that so this one will be part of that and if we now load that up here let's have a look at the result so here is also that where is it that last one is that now and i can replace here the polysynth with that and so you will see here we have now this three layer range if we open it up you see it's equally distributed among the velocity range and the this is now also playable nicely. What else do we have? So this was the options for the velocity layers. As you have also noticed, maybe with that sound we have here left and right. So the stereo sound is split up into two separate mono files, which was also not supported in the first version. But now in a second, this is also detected. And also for that, you need to give a pattern how to detect it. This is the last option here, the mono splits. And in that case, I have an underscore 
L to detect that. You can also give more options. Also you have a single L and this is just to detect the left channel. So the right is then also take, simply taking the other uh, file and we don't need to give information about that. So as you've seen, also that works nicely. So these are the main new features. There is also a smaller feature here, which is prefer folder name to detect the name for the multi-sample because if you, if you look again at that example, you see there is no meaningful name in here. And if we would have run that with 1.0, we would have get, ended up with the name S002, which is not nice. So you, now you can see prefer the folder name, which is that one up here. And this will then be used as a name for your final multi-sample sound and also here you have the option to remove the postfix so if you want to get rid of the samples word at the end you can also give that here in the postfix text to remove option and so samples will get removed from that as well thanks for watching and i hope you like it and it comes in handy for you and if you have some great sounds creator that make some funky music <laughs>